Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. After suffering computer problems, microphone cables being chewed on by a friend's dog, and other sorts of nonsense, I am finally back up and running and able to record again. And let me just say, the past few weeks have been very eventful ones, particularly the last few days. Over the past while, Upper Echelon Gaming, Big Fry TV, Kira TV, myself, and some other YouTubers such as Callum Upton, Blue Drake 42, and Josh Strife Hayes have been covering Earth 2 and warning our viewers as to our belief that it is not a project operating in good faith. Hogue Law covered the terms of service for Earth 2 as well, which I might add was extremely helpful to gain the perspective of an actual attorney, and within his video he discussed how based on the wording and phrasing of the terms of service, discussing additional components not covered by other channels including my own, that the wording and the seeming intent is not in good faith, and lends credence to the possibility that while this may not be a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme, it may well be a project that is selling digital assets as an unregistered security per meeting the conditions of the Howey test. After gaining that additional perspective, and also after kicking myself for not even thinking of the potential of an unregistered security, which I should have as I've been following the SEC lawsuit against Ripple very closely, I would tend to agree with that assessment. Now, in addition, many of Earth 2's more, shall we say, vehement supporters themselves have classified Earth 2 as multi-level marketing, a form of marketing that came about as a natural evolution of the concept of the pyramid scheme. And while multi-level marketing is not illegal, at least not in the United States, it is highly unethical where only those at the top or close to the top end up making any sort of money and those at the bottom tend to make very little or even lose money. Now, In addition to this, myself and others have engaged in numerous debates against supporters of Earth 2. Some have issued death threats against Big Fry TV. Earth 2 have hired Tanner Rosankovic, who is known online as Various Benson, the now former lead of Capital Gaming RP, and was the developer of Civil Contract and Monogon Echoes and is a well-known dirty dev. I will paste my videos discussing Various Benson and Civil Contract in the pinned comment. They also have filed numerous defamation complaints, seemingly hitting myself and Big Fry TV the hardest, although we are very much not the only ones to have been hit. In addition, there has been a YouTuber who has been acting, in my opinion, in a highly unethical and potentially law-breaking manner, so there is a great deal of ground to cover here naturally, but before I do, I want to state this clearly and definitively before this video gets hit with two or three defamation complaints as well. If I am stating something as fact, I am showing that information on the screen. There is evidence there to show what I am relaying is true to the best of my ability. If I am discussing that information, I'm providing my opinion, which I will show you the definition where in Merriam-Webster, which I hold both of these definitions to be accurate, states, 1. A view, judgment, or appraisal formed in the mind about a particular matter, and 2. A belief stronger than impression and less strong than positive knowledge. Just so we're clear on how I present information and my opinion on that information within my videos. So with this overly long intro over, with the brief description of events over, and with my patience now over, I will start one topic at a time. In November of 2019, a developer who went by the name Various Benson earned his place in the list of the dirty devs after threatening Psy Syndicate and Big Fry TV with DMCA takedowns if they did not remove their videos critiquing his game and his actions as the game's developer to that point. After that initial incident where Big Fry TV rightfully told Benson where he could shove it, Benson continued to use extortion tactics and legal threats against Big Fry TV in a continued effort to silence critique against his terrible game, Civil Contract. Then a few short days later, it was discovered that Benson had stolen assets from the tactical FPS game Squad developed by Offworld Industries and at the same time was making several legal threats in order to attempt to silence a former community manager by attempting to enforce a non-enforceable and improperly executed non-disclosure agreement. And all of this was simply what I was covering within my videos regarding various Benson. Trust me, there was far, far more. Various Benson was a dirty dev that was exceptionally deserving of the title, and his game Civil Contract released in a very pre-alpha state that I would consider to be little more than a broken tech demo, and got panned on Steam so hard that he ended up removing it from the Steam storefront in order for him to quote-unquote fix it. However, on May 16th, per Steam DB, the game was set to a status of self-terminated project, meaning it is a dead game that will likely never again see the light of day. 
Recently, I was informed that Various Benson, whose real name is Tanner Rosankovic, something that myself, Big Fry TV, and a few others have known for well over a year, has dropped the moniker of Various Benson potentially in order to distance himself from the ramifications of his own bad faith actions, and stated that he was leaving Capital Gaming RP, the name of his studio, in order to join the Australian Defense Force. However, recently it was shown that Tanner is now listed as an Earth 2 developer, as evidenced by this screenshot. It was further confirmed by Tanner that he joined the Earth 2 team and claims that the COOF has delayed his enlistment, something that I do not believe for one second, firstly because one could never take what Tanner says at face value. Also, if one merely do a quick Google search, you will find numerous articles from Australian news sites that state that recruitment has increased dramatically, and as such, they have shifted to training and testing to be conducted via virtual meetings and assessments, and no news sources could be found that state or even hint at any form of recruitment delays. But that is, realistically, neither here nor there. The fact is, Earth 2 have hired, sorry, contracted, a known scammer and dirty dev for their team, and a very inexperienced one at that for the size and scope of the game they claim to be making. The size and scope, I might add, that Epic Games has raised $1 billion to put towards building a metaverse. Epic Games, as developers and the team members that built the Unreal Engine, contain tremendous amounts of talent that are well-versed and experienced in the type of modern games development methodology and tools that would be necessary to create a metaverse even remotely comparable to the concept of Ready Player One. The same metaverse concept that a tiny team of developers who have, in my opinion, misrepresented the actual talent of their team members once one looks up the individual team members' real games development pedigrees. But I'm sure the developer of Civil Contract, a mashup of poorly combined store-bought assets, will be more than up to the task. Of course, as with any company such as this, there will always be YouTubers that are willing to unabashedly shill for that company and tie their entire YouTube brand to that company. Such is how it appears for the YouTuber Aria Realty, who has been doing his best to attempt to combat the opinions of channels like mine, Big Fry TV's, Upper Echelon Gaming, and Kira TV, particularly with his video titled simply, Earth 2 is not a scam, with the entertaining thumbnail containing all of our logos and a crying baby, which is clearly an attempt to say that we are collectively crying over Earth 2, where in reality it appears to more accurately indicate Aria Realty's level of maturity. And that video is, per Aria Realty, quote, in response to the hit pieces that are going out right now on Earth 2. And within that video, Aria Realty does his very best to attempt to combat the statements made regarding information our channels had pulled directly from the Earth 2 website. And within it, he attempted to outdate the outrage by claiming we had pulled content in regards to the systems in place for being able to pull money out of Earth 2 by stating that the YouTuber in question's content was four months old. And he was not a dedicated Earth 2 YouTube channel, so therefore his information should, in the viewer's eye, be made to seem less credible. However, as outlined in my own video, I discussed how that information was still accurate per the Earth 2 website, and I also discussed the other payout methods being instituted by Earth 2 and how they are all equally deficient, in my opinion. And use up-to-date information, at least, in your, your research <laughs> of, of Earth 2 and not videos of some kid that's five months old. <laughs> And one thing that Aria Realty states within this video is very inaccurate, although I can understand how he would lack comprehension in this. So if you're new to this channel and you're new viewers coming from the larger channels, let me give you some more up-to-date, accurate information from a guy who actually been with the company for six months now. Like, I don't work for the company, but I follow them very deeply. Except he actually does work for the company. Aria Realty is an Earth 2 Discord and Facebook moderator. Now, while I'm quite certain it is a volunteer position and is unpaid, that still means he is Earth 2 staff. So yes, in my opinion, that does mean he works for the company. And that is important, because you, as a YouTuber, have a responsibility, again in my opinion, to disclose a very clear and real bias to your viewers. You are not a third party discussing a game or its developers, you are staff promoting the game to your viewers, which is highly unethical. 
And while this entire video was an attempt at debunking our videos, he does an entirely inadequate job and spends most of his time discussing how much money he's made, how much his Earth 2 tiles are worth, how people that follow his channel have made money, money this, money that, and some more stuff about money with one of the smarmiest expressions I've ever seen on another human being. And that entire time, this quote-unquote debunking video does nothing to attempt to debunk any information that we provided outside of the one claim of four months old data that was, in actuality, still very accurate. However, I did include the other equally as terrible payment methods Earth2 had added on since that video. And since Aria Realty claims to have seen all our videos, I would assume he would have been aware of that. But it is at least possible he ignored that portion of my video because it would not support his narrative. That, based on that one aspect and his assertions of his own income from the game which is not a game currently, means that our entire videos are wholly and completely inaccurate. However, perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps Arya Realty is simply a genius that is too smart for our collective channels. I mean, he's a huge World of Warcraft fan, so naturally, he knows about games. If you don't know what an MMO is, it is a, it stands for Mass Media Online Role Playing Game MMO RPG. Yes, real pillar of information there, I see. And I normally do not like doing this, and it has been covered by both Upper Echelon Gaming and Big Fry TV, but I feel compelled to in this instance, because this pillar of gaming knowledge may be all smarm and smiles, but he's not the type of person that I myself would deem to be ethical in any way, shape, or form. And yes, I'm going to resist using that as a lead-up to making a joke about his appearance, there's really no need. Recently, Aria Realty sent this message to Upper Echelon Gaming where he says, Want me to put out a UE Roast video? I'm trying to make friends, not enemies, so I'll ask for your permission, but people seem to love this feud, so it's more money for us. And that is, to my mind, a very clear-cut case of Aria Realty attempting to solicit Upper Echelon Gaming for a tit-for-tat, dishonest YouTube back-and-forth video war merely for the sake of soaking up ad revenue and generating false drama which I stated as much to Arya Realty before he deleted his Twitter account, but I will say it again here. Games critics, such as our four channels and countless others, are engaged in properly informing our viewers in regards to the games industry. We don't just do whatever will make us the most money. Hell, I know all of us have put out videos that were extremely poorly received. I know I have. But speaking for only myself here, and likely the others would agree, I did so anyways, even though I knew it would be unpopular because I believed both the information and my opinion on that information that it was the right thing to do. Not for me, not for my wallet, but for my viewers. It's a little something called ethics and moral standards, something I suspect Aria Realty would be completely incapable of comprehending at even its most basic fundamental level. In addition to that, Upper Echelon Gaming, Big Fry TV, and myself have all individually spoken with the Discord user that goes by Stax. And Stax had quite the story to tell with evidence to underscore her statements, where Arya Realty was a guildmate of hers in World of Warcraft, and he had attempted to solicit nudes from her, first for $20, then for $100, then finally $500. All the while, she kept saying no or ignoring him for days at a time, where he would invariably come back and keep trying. In Stack's own words, through the timestamps, you can see that he keeps going with the subject despite me not replying over a period of days. I leaked those messages to our gaming Discord that we were mutual in when I denied him, and he began harassing me. Over a period of weeks, he kept harassing me in front of everyone, and despite multiple people defending me, he kept going. That's when he sent this message. And as you can see, I was trying to engage in normal convo at the top. I had mentioned earlier that I was going to take a nap, and then he said that to me. And this is where Arya Gaming, who is going by the username Turbulence Ambush Record Holder, said, Hope you never wake up, Bev. Stax continues by saying, Before you ask, yes, he got a 24-hour mute for making racist comments in the Discord. However, I wasn't there for that, and I have no idea what he said, but that is why I asked about them in response to the shower comment and blatant harassment against me for months. Oh, he also followed me to another Discord, and he randomly started attacking me in that one one day. I don't remember the convo, but I was speaking to someone and literally the first comment in that Discord that we made, he called me a bitch or something along those lines. He called me a homewrecker because I have affiliations with the Department of Defense and because I do that makes me a homewrecker because all women sleep with married men, his words. 
Lol, yeah, I found that thread, but his messages were deleted. And this was the only message that uh, she had to be able to provide for that conversation. And during that entire time, Arya Realty was apparently a married man attempting to solicit nudes from a guildmate, harassing her when she shut him down, stating that he wished her to die, and came back to continue harassing her nearly a full year later. Paragon of gaming knowledge and the picture of mental stability, clearly. And I would also like to take a few moments to address some of the statements Arya Realty made in his most recent live stream before boredom caught up to me and I had to stop watching. First, his statement at around the 37 minute mark, I believe. When I became a mod, I was trying to help out the community. I was trying to help out the company because I love them so much. I'm like, what can I help with? You know, you don't have to pay me or anything. Oh, you can be a moderator. I'm like, oh, sure. So I do it for free. I didn't know it would turn into this like negative mindset of he's part of the company. No, I'm not. I'm just a regular dude, just like you are. Literally just a dude with a YouTube channel that tries to help out the, the chat. Like, I, I have no secret access to anything. Of course, I'm certain Arya Realty has no understanding whatsoever why failing to disclose his direct ties to the company would lead to anyone expressing concern or anger. As I previously said, that creates a very clear and present bias in favor of the company and in favor of protecting his own investments, which means, in terms of relaying accurate and honest information, his judgment is compromised by that bias, and it is something that should absolutely be disclosed to your viewers if you are a YouTuber that is in such a position. And a more important thing to discuss from that live stream is the following. Rock the Crossbar says, uh, giving someone your car insurance info is insane. What? As a coming from the gamer side, that does sound insane. It's like you got to give these people your personal information for your money. Like, yeah, that does sound insane. But this is close, closely to the, the cryptocurrency world. If you want to have cryptocurrency and the exchange and make money on this exchange, you need to give them all your information. It's called a uh, KYC, like know your know your customer. So if you if you get a, an account anywhere, like Binance.com, the largest uh, cryptocurrency, like they give like they want everything. I opened an account on Binance, and it took me like two months to get uh, an account with them. And they wanted everything. They wanted my my firstborn, my DNA sample, <laughs> like not that stuff, but they wanted everything. Now, listen closely here, please, because this is of critical importance. There is an entire world, pun intended, of difference between providing personal information to a financial institution and providing the same or more personal information to an unproven and new games development team. You see, any exchange, whether it be stock or crypto, must adhere to a laundry list of government guidelines and requirements in order to operate within the US. Similar laws and restrictions apply in other countries. Now, let me show you what I mean. For cryptocurrency exchanges, per compliadvantage.com, quote, Cryptocurrency exchanges are legal in the United States and fall under the regulatory scope of the Bank Secrecy Act. In practice, this means that cryptocurrency exchange service providers must obtain the requisite license from FinCEN, implement an AML slash CFT and sanctions program, maintain appropriate records, and submit reports to the authorities. Meanwhile, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has indicated that it considers cryptocurrencies to be securities and applies securities laws to digital wallets comprehensively in an approach that will affect both exchanges and investors alike. By contrast, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission has adopted a friendlier do-no-harm approach, recognizing Bitcoin and Ethereum as commodities and allowing other virtual and cryptocurrency derivatives to trade publicly on exchanges that it regulates or supervises. In response to guidelines published by FATF in June 2019, FinCEN has also made clear that it expects crypto exchanges to comply with record-keeping requirements and the travel rule by sharing information about the originators and beneficiaries of cryptocurrency transactions. The U.S. places virtual currency exchanges in the same regulatory category as traditional AML slash CFT gatekeepers, financial institutions, and money transmitters. Accordingly, it applies the same regulations, including those set out in the 2021 amendments to the Bank Secrecy Act, which has established its own version of the travel rule. With something that is purported to be a video game, no such requirements such as those I just listed off and no regulations exist. And as such, there is nothing to protect the consumer or the investor. And given the laundry list of issues with the terms of service, outlined in exceptional detail by Hogue Law, and again, I'll post a link to his video down in the pinned comment so you can gain information as to the full meaning of that, he stated that if a client of his were considering this terms of service, he would tell them to run screaming for the hills. 
That is the difference. There are no protections for the gamer or the investor within a supposed game where its own terms of service are severely weighted in favor of Earth 2 to the extreme detriment of the gamer or an investor. And as such, providing Earth 2 with a massive list of personal information that they very easily could abuse is not only incompetent mental processes on the part of any quote investor, but is absolute insanity combined with stupidity. Blind trust of a new and as yet unproven team of so-called developers while this person himself claims he's never been scammed in the past? It begs the question, how in the hell has this person managed to dodge the bullet for so many years if his assertion about not being scammed is to be believed? It beggars the laws of probability in the extreme. But who knows, maybe Earth 2 have already complied with all regulatory requirements, and if they have, then I personally would have slightly less trepidation in regards to the laundry list of personal data they require. I say slightly less because their terms of service are so monumentally terrible that it boggles the mind. And if they have followed through with all of those compliances with regulations, they would do well to announce that compliance as they very much do appear to be acting as an exchange. If you don't know what an MMO is, it is a, it stands for Mass Media Online Role Playing Game MMORPG. Recently, Big Fry TV, Kira TV, and myself have received numerous defamation complaints in regards to our Earth 2 videos, with Big Fry TV being the worst one hit out of all of us, to my recollection. Both of my videos on the subject have been hit with defamation complaints from Australia, the UK, and Italy of all places. We naturally attempted to fight these, however, how the process works is extremely backwards and as such it appears exceptionally easy to abuse. Now, this isn't the first time I've battled a defamation complaint. A few years back, Andrew Watt had filed a defamation complaint against one of my videos discussing that particular dirty dev and his actions and threats made against my channel and me personally. With the first defamation complaint, I was able to overturn it. However, it was a process that took three months before YouTube relented and reinstated the video. However, Andrew Watt had filed a defamation complaint on another video merely for mentioning his name that was eventually overturned as well. However, after a few months, YouTube quietly reinstated the block for that video in the UK, and I was never notified by YouTube of that action, and my subsequent attempts to combat that block failed. So let me tell you what happens with a defamation complaint. Firstly, YouTube is supposed to notify you, which from my own personal experience is not always the case. YouTube then immediately blocks the video from being viewed within the country where the defamation complaint originated. YouTube provides the creator with no data as to what content within the video was claimed as defamatory, and YouTube will refuse to disclose that data no matter what, meaning the creator must combat the complaint completely blind, much like attempting to throw a dart behind your back whilst blindfolded and attempting to hit a bullseye. YouTube provides the content creator with one single chance to dispute the claim where you must guess to the best of your ability and attempt to refute a claim of which you possess no knowledge as to the details. And then you have an opportunity to state any relevant laws or regulations. However, you must bear in mind that you would have to be a legal expert on international law in these instances as it seems you would need to state relevant United States law as well as accompanying laws from the country in which the complaint was filed. This information gets sent back to YouTube, who most likely don't even bother reading it, and then they deny your dispute and that video will no longer be visible in that country for the remainder of its existence. So, Big Fry TV and myself have had defamation complaints from the UK, Italy, and Australia. YouTube has refuted all of our filings to reverse the block, and as such, those videos are currently no longer visible in those three countries and will remain so forever. Now, these do not count as community guideline strikes nor DMCA takedowns, so these videos will remain visible in all other countries and for those viewers in those three countries that choose to utilize a VPN to make themselves appear as if they're in another country. However, this is extremely dangerous for our channels. As this sort of thing grows to be more prevalent, YouTube may decide we are more trouble than we're worth and simply exercise their right to terminate our channels. And I fully expect this video to receive the same treatment. So, welcome to YouTube, where the facts don't matter and terms of service are king. Now, I spoke with Hogue Law regarding this, and Leonard French DM'd me privately, promising to take a look when he had a free moment, which I greatly appreciate. Both are good people and good lawyers who produce fascinating YouTube content, and I'm extremely grateful to both of them. Hogue Law stated, and bear in mind this is not seen as legal advice, nor was it offered as legal advice, for the most part, YouTube has broad powers here. 
if we reasonably believe that any content is in breach of this agreement or may cause harm to YouTube, our users, or third parties, we may remove or take down that content at our discretion. See also, if you see content you believe does not comply with this agreement, including by violating the community guidelines or the law, you can report it to us. Note that the law is not limited to applicable law or otherwise. So YouTube has a broad right, YouTube is under no obligation to host or serve content, with at least a plausible reason to believe that someone sitting in some foreign jurisdiction might have a case and a general disinterest to defend you over it. Meaning it is possible that whomever filed the defamation complaint, which for all we know might even have come from Earth 2 fanboys and not Earth 2 themselves, have the potential of filing lawsuits against us over the content of our videos. And as YouTube will refuse to get in the middle, after all, why would they? They will simply turn a blind eye and make sure they are protected from any potential of legal prosecution. However, make no mistake. While my videos will still be visible to roughly 85% of my active viewer base, this does appear very much to be an attempt to silence critique and dampen the outrage, potentially even to avoid awareness of this project within the countries where they operate, which leads me back to the discussions surrounding exchanges and regulatory requirements. And the thing that gets me the most in terms of the Earth 2 fans, sorry, investors, who are simply blindly supporting this thing which is currently little more than a few simple and easy to accomplish cutscenes and a digital market for squares on a map, and a laundry list of promises, is that they constantly state, do your research, it's not a scam. And yet, not a single one of them that I have seen to date have been able to relate any shred of information to show how it might not be a scam and instead simply regurgitate the promises that the developers have made and the claims that they are making that surround this game that is not a game that is an investment contract that is not an investment contract that is an MLM that is not an MLM. They are never able to refute any of the concerns raised by myself or other critics that have been covering this and that is extremely troubling because that shows to me that these people are exhibiting an absolute and ultimately blind faith in something that is little more than a promise made from an untested, very small team that have yet to show or prove anything whatsoever. I mean, I hope that I'm wrong. I honestly do. I hope that they can pull it off because if they could, then a small team would be able to do what Epic Games with all of their massive resources are currently unable to accomplish. It would be a truly amazing feat. But do I think it likely? No, absolutely not. After all, legitimate developers actually respond to concerns raised or objections to actions taken. It's actually quite easy for them to do. Legitimate developers do not resort to doing what they can to silence critics and attempt to push any concerns or objections out of the way, because legitimate developers don't need to resort to such things. Directness and honesty is the hallmark of an upfront developer or development team, whereas hiding in the shadows… well, that is something else entirely. One more time. Welcome to the Dirty Devs, Earth 2. I hope you enjoy filing defamation complaints on this video as well. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. I'll see you next time.